Let me know when you're done with this. All right. Like April, yeah. the week of April 12th. Oh, ours is a week early. Yeah, most yeah. strong. I'm very happy about it being late. I'm hoping it will be less crowded.
Well, good morning and happy St. Patrick's Day to all. I um, want to touch on a couple quick topics. Uh, first and foremost, you'll see this week that we unveil our budget. I want to give the President credit when I can, and I want to thank the President for the very first time in his presidency he has submitted a budget on time. The unfortunate part and the contrast that you'll see, his budget never balances. Doesn't balance in 10, doesn't balance in 100 years. You'll see that the new American Congress, the Republican budget, will balance in less than 10 years put America on a different path and a different track. You'll also see further this week that we'll have bills protecting employees, increasing transparency, and reforming government. Now being, I consider one of the lone Irish in leadership, I, my father always believed on every day to give you an Irish blessing. My favorite Irish blessing, not only to you and to the American public, may the road rise up to meet your feet. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine softly upon your face and the rain fall soft in the field. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of your hand. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, Thank you. <clears throat> good morning. My name is Bruce Poliquin. I'm a freshman congressman from the great state of Maine. I'm a small business owner. I'm the former state treasurer. And I'm a single parent of the greatest 24-year-old you could ever meet. Hardworking Maine families have been borrowing their excuse me, balancing their checkbooks at the kitchen table for generations. And our small business owners in Maine understand that they need to spend only what they take in. As Maine State Treasurer, I worked with all parties to make sure we balanced our books and started paying down our debt, and we did it without raising taxes. Now, it's time Washington does the same. That's why I support a balanced budget amendment to our Constitution. Now, once Washington learns to live within its means, we'll have job creators that have the confidence to expand their businesses and create new ones and create more jobs. More jobs, more opportunities, more freedom and better lives. That's what Republicans are all about, and that's our vision. Now, this is going to be tough, but we can do this. We must do this. Hardworking taxpayers across our country, they deserve a government that works together and for them, not against them. Thank you very much. If we've learned anything over the last few years, it's that we can't, cannot count on Washington to balance its budget, to really force the tough spending decisions that we need to get our fiscal house in order. I've had many titles before I came to Congress, mom, CPA, state treasurer, and in all of those situations, I always had to balance the budget. And that's why I'm really proud this week that the House Republicans will be rolling out their budget. That will balance within the budget window something that the president has been incapable of doing. His budget never, ever balances. Into perpetuity, he can never point to a time in history where he will stop spending more of the taxpayers' money than he takes in. And I'm also proud within this budget will be reforms to the tax code to make it simpler, simpler fairer, and flatter. Uh, there's no doubt we've got a lot of challenges ahead, but our plan is to make America more secure, cut waste, boost our economy, and get this balanced budget in place is a good first step. Morning. This week the House Budget Committee will take up and pass the budget out of committee, and then we're going to take it up, pass it off the House floor next week. And of course our budget is our vision for how to get the country back on track, how to address the big problems that Washington is facing, and it stands in stark contrast uh, to the vision that the President's laid out, not only in his policies, but also in his budget. Uh, and, and the contrast couldn't be clearer in the fact uh, that he continues to raise taxes, over $2.1 trillion in new taxes in his budget, uh, with the continued policies that have failed Americans, and yet he never, ever gets to balance. And then that contrasts with our budget, uh, which has no new taxes, actually promotes growth, has a pro-growth economic policy, pro-growth tax policy, uh, repeals Obamacare, repeals Dodd-Frank, all these rules and regulations that are holding our economy back, and it gets to balance within the 10-year window by getting that economic growth. Uh, today's St. Patrick's Day. Uh, today's also my daughter Madison's birthday. And I called Madison this morning. I sang her happy birthday. I won't repeat that for you. Uh, but I'd love to be with Madison back home today for her birthday, and I can't be uh, because I'm up here. We all make sacrifices to do these jobs. 
Uh, but one of the reasons that I make the sacrifice, and so many of my colleagues do, is because we want to go out and fight for the big things that it takes to get our country back on track. Uh, this budget is that first step in laying out that big vision for how we can get the economy back on track and how we can create a better America so that Madison and everyone else's children and grandchildren can have the same opportunity that we have today. As we roll out our budget today, I'm, I'm reminded how important a budget is to improving people's lives, that a more efficient, a more effective, a more accountable federal government is going to create more opportunities for people all across this country. And it was great to be back in Eastern Washington last week. And as you know, I talked to veterans or entrepreneurs or startups that are uh, wanting to live the American dream and see what they can do, or moms and dads that are saving for their kids to go to college. You know what? The, the opportunities that each of these people will have. And I'm a mom of three kids, and I know firsthand how difficult it can be to live within your means, to get a budget in place. But I think anyone, any family that has a budget in place, small business, the states, you know that a budget makes you more aware of every spending decision. And it's through the budget that you set priorities and you, and you work to make sure that you are living within your means because you understand that putting, putting off those spending decisions doesn't make it any better. So I am proud of the fact that we are putting forward a balanced budget that is going to help make America stronger. It will lead to a stronger America. It's by setting those priorities that we can put money back in people's pockets and trust them to make the best decisions for themselves. By getting a budget in place, we make the government more efficient, more effective to everyone. And by making the tough spending decisions, we will create a healthier, healthier economy for Main Street, not Washington. So it's time for the federal government to tighten its belt, live within its means, just like Americans do every day. Good morning, everyone. Uh, for 53 of the last 60 years, uh, the federal government uh, has spent more than it has taken in. 53 of the last 60 years. Uh, it's unacceptable. Uh, to this day, now in his seventh year in office, the President has never proposed a budget that balances. Our budget will balance, but it's also about growing our economy, growing jobs, uh, and building economic strength for our future. Uh, lastly, uh, let me reiterate uh, that the American people deserve all the facts about what happened in Benghazi. Now, that's why it's so important for Sen Secretary Clinton to turn over her personal server to a neutral third party. Uh, that I think this is the fairest way to make sure that we have all the documents that belong to the public and ultimately all the facts. Mr. Speaker, do you intend to direct the Oversight Committee to launch its own investigation into her emails? Or are you satisfied with what the Benghazi Committee can pursue? Uh, rigorous oversight activities at both the Benghazi Committee uh, and at uh, the Government Reform Committee, and I don't think there's any, any changes that need to be made. We're not. So what's the way forward? Uh, the way forward is for the Secretary to turn over all uh, of her emails that uh, pertain to but some neutral third party is going to have to make some decision about what documents uh, are, quote, personal uh, and which ones are public record. And uh, thus far, she's been unwilling to do this. Following up on that, Speaker Boehner, uh, on the committee becoming subject, the multiple committees that you're launching on this probe is overkill. And that the multiple what? Multiple committees that are looking into this is overkill. No, 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 no. Oh, well, 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 oh, no, no, no. Nothing has changed. The Benghazi Committee uh, are, is the committee that, uh, that found uh, this personal email usage. And uh, the Benghazi Committee is focused on getting the facts about what happened uh, with regard to Benghazi. The Reform Committee has uh, worked on the, the federal open records law, uh, and they're continuing their work on that. There is nothing, no changes been made in terms of how we're approaching uh, dealing with these documents. Last question. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we haven't seen you since the DHS bill fail on the floor uh, and then eventually passed. The well, you bill. haven't been at all the press conferences, then. Uh, no, actually, I checked. You did one interview on a Sunday after that. What, how many more times is this going to happen this year going forward in which you have 
have to pass something with maybe a third of your coffers? Listen, I believe that uh, the Department of Homeland Security uh, needed to remain open. And uh, I understand the frustration uh, that I have and all my members have and our constituents with, with regard uh, to the President's uh, executive overreach, uh, his unconstitutional actions. Uh, but shutting down the Department of Homeland Security uh, was not a way to get to, to the answer there. And we won the fight in the House. The problem is we didn't fight, win the fight in the Senate. Uh, it was time uh, to move on, and frankly, I'm happy we did. Thanks. How far do you have